Welcome, I am Tanya Lamo, the Extension Director and Horticulture Agent for Dare County Cooperative Extension. Thank you for joining us today through this series, Advice to Grow By. Each month, we'll dig into the many facets of the wild and wonderful world of horticulture. So whether you're a novice plant collector or if your thumb is already bright green, join us as we share information and resources to expand your skills and knowledge. Just a note about Cooperative Extension, North Carolina State Extension extends research-based knowledge to all North Carolinians, helping them transform science into everyday solutions that improve their lives and grow our state. Some of the most frequently asked questions we receive at our Ask a Master Gardener volunteer helpline are questions related to the mighty live oak. And today, I'm going to review with you some of the research and answers shared to our community by the Master Gardeners. So I wanna also give a thank you to our dedicated staff of Extension Master Gardeners here in Dare County because a lot of the answers I'm sharing today are drawn from the research that they gathered. So the live oak is a medium-sized, showy, long-lived evergreen tree that may grow up to 80 feet tall. It is found in the coastal plains of Virginia, North Carolina, and southward along the Atlantic and Gulf Coast. These trees provide shelter to birds and mammals, and they are host plants to moths and butterflies. While it's called an evergreen, it's not a true evergreen, but it does retain its leaves until the new ones begin to leaf out. And I'm gonna share with you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. It makes a magnificent shade tree for large areas with a broad spreading canopy. And it is adaptable to both clay and sandy soils that are acidic and well-drained. It can also handle periodic flooding and salt spray, which is why it's a fantastic choice here for Dare County, North Carolina. So some of the things we're going to be talking about today are learning how to identify the live oak, which its scientific name is Quercus virginiana. And then we're going to touch on three or four common questions that the master gardeners have answered over the course of the last year. So if you're looking at the leaves on a live oak, it has leathery green leaves with recurved or downward folding margins. And sometimes they're considered prickly or toothed. Um, they are dark green and glossy on the upper side, and it retains its old leaves until new leaves appear, which is why it's considered an evergreen. If you look at this picture, this is a really great example of tooth or spiny margins. Um, and it also has, you can see the leaves alternate, which means that they're on every other branch. They're kind of staggered up the branch rather than being directly across from one another. If you look at the underside of the leaf of a live oak tree, it um, has a light gray, green, pubescent um, underside, so that means it's slightly fuzzy. You will also notice that it has a very prominent um, light yellowish or white midrib that runs up through the center of it. And again, these leaves are just in different stages and different levels of maturity. The one on the far left is a very young leaf that most likely emerged this early spring. And then there are others that are a little bit further along in maturity. Here you can see bright green new leaves emerging along the more mature foliage. And the separate male and female flowers are born in what's called a catkin and clusters in the spring. Live oaks produce a fruit, which is a nut, and it's called an acorn, which usually has a cap. Acorns live on live oaks and are produced irregularly in the fall. And some years they produce copious amounts of acorns, and other times it's quite scant, so it's a little inconsistent in their acorn production. And you will often find the acorns in groups of, um, or clusters of two to five. And these acorns also provide food to birds and mammals. If you're looking at the bark of the live oak and wish to identify a tree through the bark, um, the live oak tree has dark and deeply divided furrows on the bark and it becomes blockier as it ages. And if you find a younger live oak specimen, you'll notice that the bark isn't quite as uh, furrowed and rough as what you're seeing here in these pictures. It will be a little bit more smooth. As I mentioned, the Extension Master Gardeners receive many questions each year about the live oak. So today we're going to cover a few of the most common questions asked. So one of them that came across their desk this year was, what is the fuzzy stuff on the underside of my live oak leaves? What causes this? Will this damage the tree? And how do I treat and manage this problem? 
So chances are, if you go out to observe a live oak, you may notice this fuzzy growth on the underside of some of the leaves. These are caused by the gall wasp, and the gall wasp will lay eggs along the midrib, which you can see here in these pictures. The enzymes in the egg that it lays form this fuzzy gall around the egg, and um, it's called a woolly gall. So here's the culprit here on the left. It's a very tiny insect. Um, and live oak is the only known host plant of the detachable woolly leaf gall wasp. Oaks in general have a flourishing fauna of gall wasps associated with them. So you may not only notice this gall on your live oak tree, but there may be other types of galls also growing on your tree. However, while they are a bit unsightly, for the most part, leaf galls on the oak are harmless, except for the anxiety that they may cause the homeowner. Now, gall wasps are difficult to treat, so we're gonna discuss a few options you may have in treating the woolly leaf gall um, to control it. Because the tissue around the grub is so distorted, um, even systemic pesticides have a hard time getting in there and breaking through that fuzzy outer covering to kill the grub. And if you look at the picture there, I dissected this woolly leaf gall, and you can see there's a tiny hole there. That's where the larva was growing, and that's where it will emerge from. But it's really difficult for a pesticide to break through that um, outer covering. So even when the trees are treated, with a chemical, the galls are not going to disappear. So if you are um, trying to treat it for aesthetic improvement, you're not going to have success because these leaf galls are, are seriously attached to the leaf. And the cultural methods of control may be a better method of controlling these and be more effective in reducing some of the impacts of these insects. So you can look around the base of your tree um, and notice if you have some fallen leaves or branches, they may be harboring some woolly leaf galls that you could rake up and then destroy those extra, the extra debris so that when those insects hatch, they're less likely to attack your tree because they're not right underneath of it. And some of the pests overwinter in the twigs and the branches. So it's a really good idea to clean up around the base of your oak tree if you notice that you have this as a problem. If you decide to go the route with chemical control, as I mentioned, it can be really challenging, but there's a few ways to do this. Um, number one, you wanna collect some of the leaf galls off your tree and put them in a plastic bag and then set them in the shade. And then monitor this from time to time. And when you notice the wasp emerging, that would be when you would try to spray. Um, the chemical that is recommended for treating woolly leaf galls is called carbaryl. The chemical, the commercial name for that is seven. But if you decide to treat your tree with a chemical pesticide, you really run the risk of damaging beneficial insects that may be in your landscape providing pollination and or food to other wildlife um, that you are trying to attract to your landscape. So I would really give a second thought to managing this problem with chemical treatment. I would try some of the cultural methods of, that we also mentioned. In addition, um, another cultural practice you can put into place is if you notice on your tree that you may have a branch that's heavily infested with the woolly leaf gall, you could just prune that branch back um, and then destroy it so that they do not hatch and that tree does not harbor that insect anymore. You'll lessen the amount of insects that you have hatching the next cycle. Another question that we're often asked is, the live oak tree beside the driveway seems to be declining. Why? So we might respond to you, or the Extension Master Gardeners may respond to you with some other questions, like how old is the tree? Is there new growth showing or is there noticeable pest damage? This helps them decide a little bit further into their research what could be the cause of the decline. So a live oak's root system um, run in the top 12 to 18 inches of soil and they can extend out as far as the widest branch in the canopy above the ground. So if you look at this live oak, this is actually at the corner of our office in Manio on Budley Street and it is noticeably beside a sidewalk and a road, but you'll notice the shadow and the canopy of the tree extends almost past the yellow line in the road, which means the roots underneath and the root system 
is most likely also running underneath the road. So the decline could be a cause of stress from driving and driveway use if this is the same situation you may have at your property. Uh, this one seems to be okay. On the back side of this hedge over here um, on the left is a brick patio that is a bit more porous than what the road may be. This is on the other corner of our building in Manio. Um, and so when you have pavement and um, paved areas or concrete areas close to your oak tree, it can limit the amount of water, air, and nutrients that those trees are receiving. So to remedy this, if you notice an increased decline, we recommend contacting a certified arborist to confirm the condition of the tree and any potential solutions um, that they may suggest for you to mitigate the problem. Especially if you really enjoy the tree, they may have some options for you rather than strictly removing it. It just depends on the condition of the tree. So another question we often are asked is, one of the live oaks in my yard looks like the leaves are turning yellow and falling. What can I do to stop this? What is wrong with my tree? Well, as I mentioned, live oaks are known as evergreens, but they're technically not a true evergreen. They are beautiful and stately trees in your landscape, so we just encourage you to enjoy them. And um, one thing that is part of their cycle is they do drop their old leaves as new leaves emerge in the spring. And this is a normal process and not necessarily a disease problem. So while the tree may appear sick or like it's losing leaves and yellowed, when the temperatures begin to rise a little bit in late January or early February, symptoms that are observed in this case would be yellowing leaves. And sometimes the leaves may have spots or blotches that might be brown or black. And they often discolor in a relatively short amount of time. And so that often will cause homeowners to be a bit panicked because they notice this immediate or really quick change within their landscape on their live oak tree. So you'll notice here, this is at the um, Outer Banks Arboretum, but this is a lot of leaf litter here. So the tree that these fell from um, was most likely just going through its regular yearly leaf cycle. And how can you tell if your tree is healthy if you do have the yellowing of the leaves like seen in the picture on the right? Well, if you look closely at the senescing or the dying leaves, look closely for new buds that are found at the base of the leaf petiole. And the leaf petiole is where the leaf connects to the stem of, or the branch of the tree. And early on, this bud might be very small, but over a few weeks' time, it will become more prominent as the older leaves begin to um, die back and the newer leaves will shortly emerge. And you can see tiny leaves from those new buds. And if these new buds are present, most likely your tree is just experiencing its normal yearly life cycle. Another question the master gardeners are often asked is, one of the live oaks in my yard has a gray green growth growing on the trunk and in the branches. Is this killing and damaging my tree? Well, gray fuzzy organisms growing on the trees and shrubs in your landscape are certainly a concern for home gardeners. While I mentioned the live oaks provide a wonderful canopy and habitat for numerous varieties of birds, insects, and mammals, many of whom forage for their acorns, this species also is frequently the host for Spanish moss and resurrection ferns. And these plants use the tree for physical support, but not for nourishment. Instead, these plants in, um, derive their food supply from the rain and the surrounding atmosphere. And here are some other pictures of Spanish moss growing in a beautiful live oak tree in Manio. Um, we don't have a lot of Spanish moss in this area, but there are a few areas that you will notice it more prominently. Another organism you may notice growing on your live oak could be lichens. And luckily, as Spanish moss, lichens are also not harmless to your plants. A lichen is not a single organism, but it is the result of a partnership between a fungus and an algae. And the lichen fungus provides its partner a home and gains nutrients in return. So you'll often notice this gray-green blocky growth growing on your bark or on the branches. There may be a little bit of um, fuzziness to the, to the look of it as well. Here are some other pictures of that. 
Lichens are found on healthy plants and more frequently on declining or stressed trees and shrubs, but that does not mean that they are causing the stress and decline in your tree. They're just, they grow a little bit easier. And um, that may be because stressed plants grow more slowly and then they shed their bark less frequently. And because the stressed plants often experience canopy dieback, they allow more sunlight to reach the lichen on the trunk, which is why they tend to thrive better on stressed or declining trees. So you really don't need to worry about controlling these um, lichens and Spanish moss. They are not harmful to the plant and they do not cause plant decline. Instead, they indicate age and poor growing conditions and environmental influence are usually to blame for the plant's decline. And while they aren't the cause, they can indicate an underlying condition. So those are the questions that we've had come across the Extension Master Gardener's desk this year. To connect with the Dare County Extension Master Gardeners, you can visit us on our website which is dare.ces.ncsu.edu. And if you have a question submit to submit to them, you may um, submit that through the OBX Greenline email that will be shared there at the website. We often recommend that you test your soil health with a soil test kit. This ensures that your soil nutrients are in order and it can also guide your landscape decisions and your gardening plans. You may call the Dare County Cooperative Extension Office to make arrangements for a soil test kit. And one thing to note right now, it's free to have your soil tested. There is no cost to get your results from April through November. You only are required to pay for shipping. Our fantastic Dare County Cooperative Extension Master Gardeners are also available in person this spring and through the summer. Um, currently, they will be um, every other Monday in Manio at 517 Budley Street, and their next day that they will be present in Manio in person will be on May 17th. And then every Wednesday, the next one will be May 12th, they will be um, available at the Dare County Outer Banks Arboretum between 9 and 11 in the morning. So if you have a plant question or a sample that you would like answered, please stop by and visit their table and they will gladly work on researching the issue for you. Another wonderful resource which you can utilize to delve into different issues and landscape ideas is the North Carolina Extension Gardener Plant Toolbox. This is, has a wealth of information related to landscaping, perennials, trees, shrubs, and annuals. And I would encourage you to take some time to explore that website. This is a list of some of the resources that I and myself and the Extension Master Gardeners have used to put together this presentation. And then I really thank you for joining me this morning in discussing the Mighty Live Oak. Next month on June 4th, the topic for advice to grow by will be fire ants and how to control them and manage them in your landscape. Thank you very much for joining me today. Have a wonderful weekend. <music>